Hey, welcome to another episode of System 345, and we want to talk about the movie or uh, the movie series Shazam, or the classic, um, the classic comic book, which comes from that classic comic book series, which is a DC uh, comic book. Here we have a lot of information, so we're gonna go through it pretty slowly um, and just break down each single part. And we're gonna use System 345 to understand. Uh, what is in Shazam and what is it made up of, right? We want to see the structure of it. We want to talk about that scaffolding that actually makes up Shazam. And we want to show how that, um, just the name and this symbol alone has a lot of information in it uh, that is related to System 345. So first thing is, can we see the three basic keys, right? Um, so we're going to start off with the first three with the basic shape of what is a lightning symbol? What is it actually made up of? If we actually look at it, it's actually made up of two rhombuses and a triangle, right? Or two square-like objects, right? Four-sided polygons and then a three-sided polygon, which is the triangle. But it's been merged together, right? We're putting this all together and notice it's three different shapes and we've got up here the three is one. Um, what we mean that is from, think about Musketeers, from the Three Musketeers, that classic novel by Alexander Dumas and the uh, classic quote, all for one and one for all. And if we look at that, that's what the three is one is really talking about. It's letting us know that all three laws work for the benefit of one and each law works for the benefit of all. Um, and also here, we've kind of mixed it up a little bit, right? We have here, we know that the triangle represented help others. Uh, and the symbol for that was the sun. We know that the square represented best practices and the symbol for that was the star. And we know that the circle was the symbol for survival and the circle of life. But here, because we're using a lightning symbol, right, a geometric shape, rather than putting a circle, notice we've just put two squares that are just connected to each other. Why would we do that? Well, if we look over to the right, 360 degrees for a square is the same as 360 degrees for a circle. So we talked about before that if five could equal nine, four could equal nine as well, right? And we added nine plus four, and we got 13, which was, and we said three plus one was four. So it was letting us know that nine does equal four. And we said that nine is kind of a gateway to knowing that nine can equal any number. And then any number can equal nine because nine is contained in it. So we want to show, we had over here, we call this inversion theory. What we're saying is that because we put the lightning symbol from top to bottom is that we're kind of switching the order a little bit. Even though the triangle represents help others, we're supposed to learn how, what, to help others through survival, to protect your own existence by helping others. And then um, learn, you know, to follow best practices can go either way. And this is called inversion theory. So we can use, in order to strengthen and help others, right, we have to look at the opposing theory, right, helping yourself. And if you learn how to balance out protecting yourself and helping others, then you're learning the, you know, how to master inversion theory, how to make yourself stronger and helping others by kind of knowing your weakness, right? The weakness of helping others would be to protect yourself or your own self-interest. So if we can master self-interest and not needing much, then helping others becomes a much easier task. And that's what the principle is, right? It helps to learn from opposing forces. Also, we're going to break the word Shazam down. Shazam is a six-letter word. We didn't even do the uh, the one AL, but we'll do that in a little bit. But we're going to start off with just the basic, what we call the alpha pound or the pound omega. We're just going to we'll turn it into numbers. We're going to convert it to alphanumerics, and we're going to look at the letters. And even over here, we actually listed the 26 letters out so we can see what Shazam is made up as far as its emotions. But first, we're going to start with the numbers. We'll start with the square, and we'll go with these numbers and add them up. So we have 181814, and if we add them up, we get 10 plus 4, which equals 14, which equals 5. And we said that any number is going to represent one of these keys. So we're going to look at our key, and we're going to see what the E key or key number 5. And we're going to see that Shazam, or that word, is from an internal standpoint, from as far as a numerical definition, is letting us know that the house key is governing. And even the one four, since we said the three is one, we could put one four and say that the house is what? One plus four equaling five. That one shape that's connected in these four sides is gonna give us a five-sided polygon. And that's the house key. And we're gonna also talk about, now, so now that we got the house key, can we see the tree of life key? Well, we have a hint. If we look at the sides of this actual lightning bolt, we're gonna get four sides, four sides, and, and three sides, right? That first rhombus is four sides. The second rhombus is four sides, 
and the third one is three sides. And once we add that together, four plus four is eight, plus three is 11 sides. Now, how do we know that connects to the tree of life? We said the tree of life from our previous talk has 11 sides, right? Or has 11 um, principles in that key of, in that tree of life, right? We talked about from crown to sovereignty or from knowledge to crown. And those um, 11 concepts of, that exist in between like kindness, strength, victory, majesty. And we talked about that in the previous recording. And here we're going to, um, also with Shazam, we kind of kind of play on words, but first we're going to just break down S H A Z A M. Like what is that actually made of? The emotions of interest. H would be the emotion of boredom. A admiration. Z sympathy. And then admiration again, and then empathetic pain. Um, later we're going to talk about how to connect those things. And if we actually were to draw like the Wells key, right, we could actually get our emotions and see where this Shazam would fall on that key, right? And then we can see which the overall direction of this, right? We saw that it was number five. If we use our Enneagram, uh, we would see that five is kind of in that Southwest corner. So it's going towards the emotion that we talked about, discussed before. Um, or if we use the A key, it will be the emotion of envy, trying to master that emotion. And also we said that five represented what? Creation. Uh, so if we just look at the basic definition of five, it means creation. But we're also going to talk about Shazam being kind of like an ancient Arabic word or an ancient Middle Eastern word. And if we go um, to something like the Quran, for example, we can actually break down uh, some meanings of why this number five is probably coming up again. Uh, number five is a number for creation. It's not just a, a symbol for Islam itself. It's just a symbol for, like we said, notice that system 345. And I think we talked about the, even the word Allah, right? If we added that up. We get the numbers 34 and notice that Allah is five letters long. So we would still get that um, the three, four, five is even in the name Allah. And uh, we can do the same thing with Kami. We talked about Japanese Shinto. If you add up Kami, you, Kami or that uh, that God's name, when you translate it to English letters, you get K-A-M-I. And we talked about five equaling nine, right? So that last I is the five equaling nine. And then we have, uh, if we add up Kami, we get 34. So we're seeing that, um, that system 345 is going to be in any religion. So now we're going to the 79th surah and the 77th surah. And we're going to see what are these, um, right, what are these five? Are they going to actually name those five parts of the house? Are they going to name the five laws of creation? Yes, but they're going to name them as personality types, right? These two surahs start off as a prayer, um, pretty much. Even though we could say every surah is a prayer, but some surahs or some chapters of the Quran are just meant to what talk to people about laws and rules, while the other part is meant to just kind of be a, uh, more of a spiritual prayer, and that has usually deeper meaning. We want to talk about some of those deeper meanings. Uh, so if we look at the English, like an English translation of the 79th surah of the Quran, it will open up saying, by those yearning vehemently, by those going forth cheerfully, by those running swiftly, and by those that are foremost in going ahead, and those regulating the affair. We're getting the five parts of the house. We're just using this pentagram um, as an example. We could have used the, uh, you know, the pentagon if we wanted to. Um, and we're putting these five, those five persons or these five personality types and saying that this is also giving us not just, um, right, this raw information is actually giving us something about personality types, about people. Um, and then we can see that Shazam is what? All about people most of the time, right? We talked about the 79th and 77th Surah. Notice that if you actually watch Shazam, there's supposed to be what, seven superheroes uh, total. So notice that the number seven is still relevant. And if we go to the 77th surah of the Quran, it'll say, by those sent forth to spread goodness, then those driving off the chafe, then those spreading goodness far and wide, then those offering the reminder to clear or to warn. So these five things are, um, and that fifth force, notice that to offering the reminder to clear or to warn. Notice that those regulating the affairs. So we know that the number five also equals what? Self-regulation. So learning how to balance those those five parts. And we talked about the, the house key acronym, right? Help others achieve, own, accept, and correct all errors, understand and take risks, sacrifice appearances for purpose, and excel in all investments of time and energy. If you do those five things, you'll be following the basic tenets of any religion. Um, and like I said, especially since uh, from Islam, like I said, Islam is five letters long, and you'll be following the tenets of most of those books that, that were revealed, Torah, um, like I said, Torah, Bible, all of those end up having five letter word names. And it's letting us know that the five laws of creation and that self-regulation is the true purpose of those books, right? Human beings learning how to self-regulate. Now we're going to go to some more play on words. We talked about Shazam being related to that ancient 
uh, Arabic or ancient Swahili or, or um, an ancient Middle Eastern kind of language where we see there's a very old, and even in the new modern one, right, they actually have kind of like an old uh, right, black guy who's actually uh, like an African actor, he's actually playing um, the actual Saddam or the older, older one. So the play on words, if we actually go to Arabic, we get Shah and Zam. Shah, or that sound of letter, could relate to um, a word in Arabic that means will. And Zam, um, we're just going to connect to well of Zam, Zam, right? This may not be the true definition of what that word Zam means, but many people believe that that word Zam, Zam, uh, was related to stop, right? That it was like an ancient Egyptian word that the uh, Abraham's concubine or Abraham's handmaid in Hagar, when she was kind of cast to the wilderness with her son Ishmael, she comes across this well, right? This well that is now close to where the um, the Kaaba at Mecca is today, or right at it, so to speak. Um, that well is called Zamzam. And notice that we use wells key today. We said that wells with that eight key, and we we actually add up Zamzam, and you know, like we said with the word wells, we get that number eight. From if we had translate it to English, and actually we get four plus four, and that equals eight. And if it did truly mean stop, right? Notice that a stop sign kind of is the octagon anyway. Um, so we're seeing a lot of plays, right? So how to now self-regulation, stop, will, you know what I mean? So we're seeing that there's some correlation, there's a connection with System 345. And we're seeing that what Shazam is letting us know that in order to actually use this formula, right, that Shazam, right, notice that he's able to kind of turn himself into a superhero and turn it off by just saying that command of Shazam. And what does that mean? He's able to use his own willpower. He's learned how to self-regulate. Um, also, we talked about Sh uh, Shazam. If you actually look at, there's actually a, uh, a chapter of the Holy Quran that's called Ashams, and that means the sun, right? So that we're letting know that Shams means sun, and that sun. And we talked about um, how can we relate, let's say, the ten numbers in twenty six letters to this. Well, first we saw that the Alski existed, right? We saw the one four. So we said that anytime we see the triangle, we should relate that to twenty six letters, and anytime we see the square of the number four, we should relate that to ten numbers, right? And anytime we see one or three, that's probably talking about the twenty six letters. Right, 13 times 2 is 26. And now we got right, the words. Now let's look at some colors. If we actually look at Shazam, right, we get kind of at least two colors. Yellow and red are usually the predominant colors that we see with that Shazam outfit. And that lightning symbol in the red background is usually a yellow uh, lightning symbol internal. And then red on the outside. So we've got yellow, sun, and red. If we added any of those numbers, are we going to get to number 9? And notice if we put any of those two together... We can say 999 nine, nine, and add to 27, and maybe that would mean 27 letters. And then we have what? If we, if we just kept yellow and red, 9 plus 9 equals 18, which equals 9. And it still gives us, we still see that actually if we make that calculation, we'll see three nines. What we're saying, we're calling this loop theory, that things uh, should kind of loop around to the same information over and over again. Um, and that the 10 numbers and 26 letters or anything related to these symbols and people making up words like this, it's probably going to end up to be these 26 letters and 10 numbers and that this is not an accident. Some people are intentionally doing this right because it's helping people. It gives interest, right? People are interested in Shazam. People are interested in watching that cartoon and the history. And it sounds cool. It's like Aladdin or any of those other old stories that we were told. But in them has a deeper meaning. And the deeper meaning is this foundational language of being able to look at those keys, extract those keys and see that this is what actually makes up Shazam. And if we did the 1AL on Shazam, we, had, we would have... 164, and that will give us 11 again. And we talked about that being related to the tree of life. And notice that we said it was 11 sides. But if we get 164, right, if we said this is the first letter, is even though this is the 19th letter, if we had 9 plus 1, we're going to get 1. Six letters long, and then the last letter is M, which we know this is the 13th letter of the alphabet. 3 plus 1 is 4, and that's where we're getting that from. 164. And like we said, that would equal to 11, and that's related to the tree of life. It's letting us know it's tree of life external. The house is internal and exa exactly what we talked about before. Remember, so we said house was internal, tree of life was external. We talked about MI5, the difference between MI5 and MI6 in the UK, right? MI5 is the internal division of intelligence and MI6 is the external division. Notice that. And then we also talked about what uh, house and yard. And then we talked about uh, plate and field. And when we, when we showed those, we showed that these were, right, this tree is always going to be related to external development mostly, the external environment. The external environment, we can say, is made in the six, and the internal environment of humans themselves is made in the in the five or in the house, right? Even if we talk about nations, if we talk about like um, different gangs and things like that, why are they using those numbers and those symbols and these uh, different things? Because it's related to these keys. Everything is related to the keys because the keys are related to matter, space, time. So anyone telling you that they have knowledge or information to share, it's going to be related to matter, space, time, and the four forces of nature. Period. It will always go back to the house key. Um, and then it's 
we said that the six or the hex key represented matter, space, time, the four forces of nature, and that matter, space, time can be inverted, right? We've heard of antimatter, so there's anti versions of those of matter, space, and time, so to speak, and that we have to be aware of that as well in order to be balanced. And then we said that Wells key also, right, if we drew lines in there, you'd see it was like five squares and four triangles. So we see that even to make that octagon, it's just made up of squares and triangles. And we said even a square is actually just two triangles coming together. I think we talked about the brother's son. They talked about that. They said, right, when, when those triads had a meeting, they called it a square. And it just meant that they had two, right, the two triads or two triangles, right, were coming together. And why would the triads even call themselves triads? Because they realized the compass in the square, right? The triad represents that those people who are part of that organization see themselves as alphas and they see the common person as an omega, right? Some people even call the average person cattle and they consider themselves an alpha civilization or an alpha government. Um, I think we talked about the difference between alpha and omega, right? The difference between like a superstar and, and the concert and then those, the crowd that kind of supports that superstar and goes to see him, right? The crowd would be the omega and the alpha would be that, that uh, superstar, that rock star. Right, if we go see a Twenty One Savage concert, Twenty One Savage is going to be the rock. He's going to be the uh, the alpha, and then the omega would be the crowd. And here as well, like we said, we looked at the twenty six letter. We just listed them out because we were just showing that everything is going to be related to that, and we ended up even getting a form of seeing twenty six letters. Right, and notice that even in Shazam, we have we ended up using Z, which is twenty six letter of the alphabet. We use the letter A. And I think we talked about this with Amazon. Notice that Amazon uses a lot of the um, kind of those starter words or the most important parts of the 26 letters are very, I should say very important. Each, each letter of the 26 letters is important, but some are, we talked about being very special, right? Letters M and N uh, were holders, right? We said that those were holders and the 24 other emotions represented were represented by the hours of the day. And then M and N were representative of midnight and noon, and these were holder emotions, empathetic pain and entrancement. Um, so when we look at words like Shazam, when we look at words like Amazon, right, like the company, why would they choose that? They would choose that because they know that M and N are what holders of information. Um, why would we choose this, right? To be a part of a corporation is to be competitive, so you probably want to master this emotion called envy. Envy can also be substituted as be called competition. Um, so that people can understand what the true nation, that envy and competition are really, from an emotional standpoint, is going to be very hard. It's going to be very hard to distinguish. Um, while in a physical sense, right, from an idea standpoint, we can we can distinguish. But from an emotional standpoint, the 26 letters are letting us know that anytime we're talking about using, we talked about these PM emotions or these emotions after N as being what principles and methodology. And that these are the emotions behind them. There are some raw emotions behind those, but those principles and methodologies are made because what envy is going to dominate an environment of the nighttime or the the uh the evening emotions while the daytime emotions will probably dominate by aberration by comparison so we're always looking at that first letter right if this is the am series we can, we're going to divide this later and just talk about am and pm again with the 26 letters so we can know right we said the letters a through l or am or morning or emotions right the daylight emotions so to speak and then we said that these were nighttime emotions these emotions o through z and then we said that the ampersand was a triumph or a, a cumulative emotion uh, so we're just using the tools right we're just using this, the sciences that we talked about we use the science of shapes which was science number three we use the science of numbers letters science number science of letters science number five science of numbers is science number two, and we're just using that to identify each part of anything that we want to do, right? We can break anything down and turn it into the system 345, right? Just being able to see that matter, space, time, and the four forces of nature. And there will be no symbol that you won't be able to define. Any symbol can be uh, defined and understood, right, very easily with system 345.